go! Here we go! Here we go! Gorgax frowned, red eyes struggling to pierce the billowing smoke that belched from vehicle exhausts. Even through the titanic rumblings of the engines, he could hear that bloodthirsty chant, rising louder above the tectonic cacophony of wheels and tracks and scrap. It didn't bode well. You chose the wrong truck, you git. The orc muttered. He pulled his hat further down on his forehead, the feathered tricorn tight around his scalp. The rogue trader was at the wheel. Dust and grime drained back across his face as they picked up greater and greater speed. His dark hair was thrown back by the momentum, whipping frantically at the metal headrest. The chassis of the truck was moving too, vibrating dangerously as the vehicle struggled under the strain. Whenever they hit a small bump, the suspension lurched upwards and smashed down again, sending bruising blows through Gorgax's body. Rogue trader! They're gaining on us! The seneschal's voice, normally peevish and annoying, had risen to a fever pitch of ear-splitting agitation. Gorgax grinned as the Umi fell over in the bed of the truck, the git's stupid curly wig slipping loose from his scalp. Gritting his teeth, the seneschal picked himself back up and took a pot shot with the las pistol, shooting blind into the exhaust fog of black fumes. Not now, Lewis. I'm trying to focus. You chose the wrong truck, boss. Don't you start, Gorgax. I'm getting enough belly aching from the git. It's too soaking slow. Well, it'll have to do. The rogue trader's hand shook violently as the steering wheel rattled, his right foot pressed firmly down on the accelerator. A missile corkscrewed overhead, vomiting fire and sparks that briefly fled bright against his coat. It hit the wall of the valley, showering the bonnet with dust and loose rock. It's got the wrong paint job. It's soaking blue. Blue is lucky. But it ain't water. A careening grot flew past them, wearing pilot goggles and a wingsuit made of squig hides. Whether the wingsuit worked was anyone's guess, because the grot wasn't using the wings, instead clutching at a huge bomb in its spindly arms. It laughed maniacally before exploding into a million pieces. The truck shook violently, but the explosion was too high above to do any proper damage. A cascading sheet of red-black blood spattered over the seneschal, as if he had been gunked by some morbid prank. Oh my god, Emperor! Gorgax <laughs> laughed uncontrollably. Why is it so sticky? The rogue trader grinned through the chipped rear mirror. See? Lucky! Enough gumph, Gorgax! Make yourself useful! Yes, boss! Oh, throw the smell! Gorgax jumped into the bed of the truck, slamming against the panelling and almost smashing right through. He blinked, patting the top of his head to make sure he was still in one piece. He was. Luckily, he had landed on his noggin, though his boss pole was bent at a right angle. The Space Marine helmet's eye visor cracking from the impact. That wasn't important, though. His hat was still on. That was the main thing. Quintus! The orc's dead! I ain't dead, but why is there two of you? Dead orcs don't talk back, Lewis. A pursuing buggy roared through the cascading smoke, cutting through their conversation. Half a dozen orcs hung from its frame, the vehicle little more than a scaffold cabin attached to an orbital rocket. The driver wore a jaunty leather cap and a manic, toothy grin. When it pressed a huge red button, the inferno flames behind the buggy transformed from yellow to nitro blue. The seneschal grimaced, bracing himself against the bed panelling. He carefully aimed his las pistol at the incoming vehicle. Very well, Gorgax. For trade and trader! The las pistol spat, the shot missing the driver and instead bouncing dangerously about the scaffolding. After a few ricochets, it struck one of the hanging-on greenskins to the chest, but the orc didn't seem to notice. Gorgax sighed loudly, earning a scowl from the seneschal. Uh, perhaps you can do better. Well, yeah, of course I can. The freebooter picked himself up, approaching the big shooter bolted in the middle of the bed. He strode confidently towards the mounted gun, shoulder plates clanking nice and loud. Just like one of those Umi pits the boss showed us, he thought, before the rogue trader rounded a corner at reckless speed and Gorgax's peg leg slipped on the grot blood. He clattered to the ground, sliding towards the big shooter and catching it with his hook. Gorgax quickly picked himself up hoping no one had seen him. What are you doing? The seneschal cried. That gun doesn't fire. I've already tried it. It works fine. You just gotta have a little faith. 
Gorgax wrenched back the side on the big shooter, planting his feet either side of the gun, and pulled on the trigger. The big shooter roared into life, a stream of cartridges clattering along the metal floor. Even bolted into the bed of the truck, its recoil was absurd, its aim immediately veering upwards as thick white steam rose from the barrel. Gorgax grunted, reaching forward with his hook to drag the weapon back down towards his target. Bullets ripped through the air, spraying across the rocket buggy just before it rammed them. It cut through the orcs horizontally, bifurcating the skull of the driver and momentarily exposing his brain before it exploded under a las round. The buggy instantly careened left, briefly achieving flight before it catastrophically and inexplicably exploded. Clintus, did you see that? What a shot, if I don't mind saying so myself. Right in the head. What's this gump? That was all me, you git! The pair were catapulted into the left panelling as the truck jinxed right, before flying rightwards as the vehicle veered left. The rogue trader was desperately trying to avoid the worst of a rockfall, the mountain pass breaking apart. The seneschal slammed into Gorgax's gut, the pair wheezing for breath as they began sliding back towards the centre of the bed. Get off, your git! Gorgax pushed the seneschal off him, struggling to find his feet. Another three trucks had followed them through the smoke. Their beds were full of orcs, boys firing wildly with their sluggers as they waved their choppers in the air. Plates of triangle scrap were bolted onto the holes, shaking violently as the trucks scattered to avoid the falling rocks. One impacted directly with a boulder, coming to an abrupt stop. A mob of orcs flew through the air, ending in a messy display of bloody splats. A second truck came close to disaster but the gigantic wrecking ball on its back span around, the momentum bringing the vehicle up onto its two left wheels. It just about cleared the rocks before smashing back down to four wheels. How are they gaining on us? The rogue trader's jaw was clenched. They must be double our weight! Gorgax rolled his eyes. Cause they're red, he thought. Like what I've been telling ya. Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Slug rounds impacted all around them, creating an almighty racket as they pinged off scrap and rock. A big shooter roared death in a rough figure of eight pattern, sending Gorgax and the Seneschal scrambling for cover. A bullet cut down the length of the orc's back, loosing a spray of blood. Another pierced through his hat, forming a perfect hole through the felt. Gorgax shouted in anger and pain, throwing his gaze over his shoulder. He couldn't see the boss's face. The rearview mirror was shattered. But the rogue trader seemed focused on his task, driving the truck towards another breakneck turn. Gorgax nodded to himself. That turn was their chance. Bullets continued to break apart on the hull of the truck. One hit the boss in the left shoulder, a plume of blood staining the red coat with a darker hue. The rogue trader shuddered, but kept driving. They reached the turn. The rogue trader threw his weight against the steering wheel. The brake shrieked as he slammed his foot on the pedal. The stench of burning tires stung Gorgax's nostrils. The suspension screamed as the frame just about held together. In the split second where the rogue trader had a clear shot, he drew his plasma pistol and fired. A blinding explosion of blue light lanced towards the closest truck, slamming into its big shooter and detonating the ammunition stores. The vehicle was swallowed up by bellowing flames, launching into the sky before it detonated like a missile hitting its target. Gorgax's eyes were wide. That was well good. Then their truck slammed into the valley wall, and everything went black. One hour earlier. Are you quite sure this is a good idea, Lord Trader? Fretful as ever, I see. Of course it's a good idea. Don't you agree, Gorgax? Oh. Uh throne preserve us the orc and i are in agreement gorgax pulled a face staring out of the truck window he was rewarded with a grainy dust clogged view of the surrounding landscape desolate steps expanded across the horizon until they met low mountains that jabbed their tiny choppers at the orange sky from here gorgax could just about make out the huge edifice to gork or mork bolted to the entrance of the mountain paths a crude collection of scrap arranged into the warlike face of an impatient god. The rogue trader drummed his fingers at the wheel and hummed. If Gorgax thinks this is a bad idea, and I think this is a bad idea, 
then should you not heed the advice of your most trusted advisors? A rogue trader must follow his instincts. You worry too much, Lewis. I believe you have said so before, Lord Trader. But I really must insist on voicing my vociferous opposition to this plan of yours. I believe you have. Gorgax, help me out. What do orcs like best? A proper cramping, boss. Precisely. And where on this world is the most proper crumping to be found? What? If you were Freaker Deka, and you could send your boys to fight anyone on this world, who would it be? They got be on this rock, boss. Yes? Uh, there ain't much to scrap with, far from the other orcs. Precisely. But Mr. Freaker Deka Esquire has a problem. He's already subjugated all the orcs within reach, and he doesn't have enough Prometheum to cross the steps to the other clans. That's where I come in. Got it, boss. Gorgax kept his gaze fixed out of the window. He remained unconvinced. The Seneschal sighed. Can't we just kill them all with bombing runs? If I may be blunt, Clintus, this scheme of yours seems little more than a vanity project. There are at least two reasons why your suggestion is a bad one, my fretful git. First, killing orcs never really gets rid of them. Second, bombing is expensive, as you are so fond of reminding me. The rogue trader laughed. I am surrounded with naysayers. I think the plan is genius. We give the orcs a bit of cheap Prometheum and send them on their way to go and kill other orcs. Best of all, they won't have enough Prometheum to get back. In the meantime, I transform that mountain range into a gigantic mine for adamantine, which... And I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, Lewis, sells for an obscene price on the galactic market. A fine plan, Lord Trader, but for one rather impressive flaw. Oh? Your plan rests on the supposition that an orc is capable of impulse control, or understanding the concept of delayed gratification. I don't know what to get just said, boss, but why don't he just stomp you as soon as you're giving him the loot? Because this ramshackle truck only contains a fraction of the loot he needs, my green friend. This cargo is the promise of more. Right. I genuinely think this is genius. I don't doubt that, Lord Trader. Even the Inquisition wouldn't complain about this one. A little bit of Prometheum. The orcs go slaughter each other. And the Imperium gets its adamantine. Hmm. Your plan does involve Xenos fraternization, Lord Trader. I'm not sure Inquisitor Ritter would entirely approve. Well, that doesn't matter. It's all legal. I am a rogue trader. This is not Imperial space. I can do what I want. I'm pretty sure that's written on a piece of paper somewhere. As long as it's deemed for the good of the Imperium, Lord Trader. Yes, but who gets to decide what's for the good of the Imperium, Lewis? The Seneschal sighed. You, Lord Trader. The rogue trader grinned. Indeed. Me. We got trouble, boss. Gorgax warned, clacking his hook against the window. He pulled another face. He hated the Umi vehicle, all cramped and enclosed. With a shuddering, wheezing, runty engine, he resisted the urge to smash the glass. The boys are here. Righty ho, this is where you come in, Gorgax. Take us to your leader, that sort of thing. Best pull up then, boss. Before they fire their rockets. And I'll have to crump a few of them, just so they take us serious. They're all right. The rogue trader smiled, bringing the truck to a halt. Fine with me. Gorgax's eyes flickered open. Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Oh, Zogoth! The freebooter picked himself up, falling as his peg leg, already bent and damaged, snapped in half beneath his weight. He groaned. He'd been thrown clear of the truck bed, leaving an orc shaped impact in the wall. The armor plate on his right shoulder had been shorn in two, blood gushing from where the jagged parts had cut into his flesh. Gorgax glanced about. The collision had caused a rock slide, burying their closest pursuers under a mountain of blood stained boulders. A few orc vehicles had escaped complete disaster, instead crashing into rocks or valley walls. 
boys slowly pick themselves out of the wreckage, psyching themselves up with a chant. Gorgax's eyes settled on the biggest vehicle. The battle wagon had slammed into a square-shaped boulder, its front wrapped around the cuboid shape. A prowl-mounted hammer slammed down onto the rock, shattering it into a thousand pieces. They didn't have long. The freebooter picked himself up, hopping over to their truck. The seneschal had remained inside the bed of the vehicle, his leg at a grotesque angle where the knee had inverted under impact. Luckily, the git was unconscious, otherwise he'd be screaming. The rogue trader was slumped over the passenger's seat, having fallen out of his own when the truck ended on its side. A long cut in his forehead dribbled blood around purpling skin tissue. Uh, boss! Whoa! Gorgak staggered as a chopper was buried in his back, the weapon sticking in the iron musculature between his shoulders. Growling, he spun and backhanded the opportunistic git with his hook, ripping off half their face and killing him in an instant. Another ran at him with a huge chopper. Gorgax parried it with his hook and stumbled, immediately missing his peg leg. As his foe advanced with a series of wild, inexpert swings, Gorgax balanced himself and reached for his own chopper. You're in for it now! What? He tugged on the chopper, but it wouldn't budge. It was locked in the metal scabbard the boss had given him. Parrying another wide strike, Gorgax risked a glance down, seeing that the weapon was bent at a right angle. Stupid! Zogged! Umi! Scrap! Losing his temper, Gorgax gave the weapon one more wrench. With the screech of tearing metal, the scabbard tore from his belt, chopper still encased within. Gorgax smacked it into his enemy's head, cracking open the skull before he used his hook to claw out their throat. Disgusted with the useless scabbard, Gorgax flung it to the ground and reached for his snazzy shooter. Another four orcs ran at him, firing their sluggers in the air for emphasis. Get Jaka! Gorgax aimed his shooter and fired, dousing the charging orcs in a stream of bullets and burning Prometheum. The orcs went up like the Emperor's Day turkey Gorgax had cooked the lads last Sanguinala, screaming as their green skin turned into a scaly black. Gorgax threw back his head and laughed. Yeah! Get some of that! By the time the orcs were dead, another mob had taken their place and Gorgax's shooter was empty. Gorgax flung it into the torso of one of them, hopping furiously to meet them halfway. He half barreled, half fell into the first boy, crushing their ribcage with his knee as he disemboweled another with his hook. Five more orcs jumped on top of him, pinning him to the ground in a scrum. Gorgax felt a storm of punches and kicks along his body, roaring as he struggled to free himself. He headbutted an orc as he drove his knee into some other git's stomach, biting down hard on a hand as his own chugged out another. Slowly but surely, he was getting the upper hand simply too big and too killy for his attackers to keep down. It was only after he shouldered off the last orc that he realized he had an audience. Who's Gorgax, yeah? The growling voice came from another orc, a knob wearing a boss pole stuffed with orc skulls. The freebooter sized him up, stomp hopping on a git's neck as he found his balance. The knob was big, towering over the other boys, but Gorgax was bigger. On the other hand, the knob still had two legs. I'm Gorgax, yeah. What about it? I is Stomper. Remember the name? Nah. Stomper stomped. His boots were shod with spiked metal, causing great rivets in the ground. You's a stupid git, mucking about with Umis and not other boys. You forgot that green is best. Green is best, you git. But your boys are grots. My boys might not be green, but they're still proper hard. <laughs> Gorgak sighed as the seneschal woke up, their piteous scream stinging his ears. Stomper laughed. Ranty humies! You ain't nothing but a runt, Gorgax. Nothing but a digger knob. Gorgak shrugged. Nuff gumph. We gonna scrap or what? The knob roared, drawing two chain choppers and running at Gorgax with wild abandon. Gorgax blocked the first strike and the second, but he was on the back foot, hopping backwards as each blow threatened to knock him to the ground. He really missed his peg leg. It was making it hard to find his balance. Eventually, Gorgax ran out of ground to give, 
He smacked into the back of the upturned truck and a chain chopper dug deep into his belly. The other drove into the bed paneling, kicking up black smoke and orange sparks. Stomper left it buried there, using both arms to drive the other chain chopper deeper into Gorgax's gut. He leaned close, breath stinking hot. Me chain choppers are dead dirty, aren't they? They is gonna kill ya dead. Why you got words for everything? Gorgax asked, feeling the chain teeth saw through his intestines. Always talking, talking. He headbutted Stomper to the head, breaking the knob's nose and sending him staggering. Just as Stomper stumbled, the chopper in the bed paneling finally sprung loose, spinning wildly before plunging directly into the knob's chest. Stomper reeled, staring down at his chest in confused fascination. A second later, his head exploded under a plasma explosion. Gorgax grunted, pulling out Stomper's other chain chopper as the rogue trader limped alongside him. Could have handled it myself, boss. I do not doubt it, Gorgax. Unfortunately, we're in a bit of a rush. They all stared at Stomper's headless corpse, the rogue trader, Gorgax, the mob of orcs. The chain chopper was still spinning from where it had improbably landed in the knob's body. See, Gorgax, Blue is lucky. The rogue trader glanced at the freebooter. Can you go on, my friend? Gorgax grinned by way of response. He pulled himself up to full height, addressing the crowd of onlooking orcs. Look, see here, you kids. I is needing wheels. So if you don't want to get wrecked, you'll get me some right quick. And no mucking about. I want a proper wheels. The big one that's there. With a proper red paint job. And if I hear any gump out your gobs, I'll take your noggins and shovel up your jubblies. He turned back to the rogue trader as the intimidated orcs hastened to do his bidding. I think they'll do it, boss. In the meantime, can you shut up the zog in Seneschal? To get her and me noggin. The rogue trader pulled a face. I'll do my best. Less than an hour earlier, the Umi truck pulled into the center of the orc base, surrounded by the hundred wheels of war boss Freaka Dika. Gorgax followed the rogue trader out of the vehicle, immediately noticing how they were being blocked in. All manner of orky wheels were on display. Shuddering buggies, scrap festoon trucks, rocket engines, even gas guzzling battle wagons. And for every vehicle, there were a dozen weapons rocket launchers, big shooters, zap guns, cannons, death rollers, ripper claws, wrecking balls. And then, for every weapon, there were a dozen orcs, festooned with choppers and sluggers. Thick black smoke choked out the air from belching exhausts mingling with the stench of burned rubber and the general stink of thousands of orcs all pressed together in a small space. Out of everyone present, though, one orc dominated Gorgax's attention. War boss Freaka Dika. The orc towered over them, sat atop his bone breaker wagon, his vastness expanded by the mega armor that covered him head to foot. Only small patches of soot-stained green were visible, his growling face obscured by a monstrous iron gob that was stained with dried blood. A rocket launcher sat on each shoulder, his mailed fists gripped tight around the steering wheel of the Bonebreaker wagon. Said vehicle thundered dangerously, black fumes coiling like dragon breath. The vastness of its frontal spiked roller slowly itched towards the rogue trader's feet. Umi, what you want? The war boss's voice was a low growl, the same cadence of his wagon's rumbling engines. Gorgax was proud to see that the rogue trader didn't seem intimidated, though. Mighty Freaka Dika, war boss of the Hundred Wheels, warlord of the Great Plains, I come to pay you tribute. I bring you Prometheum and ammunition, which... Oh, I see your brave warriors have already started helping themselves. No matter, that's all right. What ya want? I want to help you, great war boss. This tribute is but a fraction of my wealth. I want to give you even more, vastly more, so that the Hundred Wheels can cross the Great Plains and wage war on the Western tribes. Freaka Deka narrowed his bloodshot eyes. Yeah, and what you want for it? Well, nothing. 
Only the promise of safe passage for me and mine, so that we can pay you proper tribute in the days to come. <laughs> Stupid Umi. You already paid me the tribute. Now what? No, no. This is only a fraction of my tribute. I can bring you entire shuttles of Prometheum and bullets. Where's that then? In orbit, mighty warboss. In my void ship. You see, I am a rogue trader and- You have a ship? Quite so. Full of Prometheum and bullets for you and your tribe, I- I'll take that then. The rogue trader smiled, but Gorgax could see stress creeping into his eyes. I don't think you understand. I can't give you my ship, but I can give you huge amounts of Prometheum and- I understand. Nuff, Gumph. Give me your ship, or I'll crump ya. A wave of excitement rippled through the Amaster Orcs. Gorgax took a protective step forward, but the rogue trader held up a hand. Very good, great war boss. You have outsmarted me. I will give you my ship. I just need to get it ready for you. So, if you don't mind, I must be on my way. The war boss's eyes were horizontal slits of red bloodlust. I ain't stupid. You ain't leaving. You tell them to bring the ship here. Now. The rogue trader shook his head. Gorgax noted that his hands were at his side. My ship is very large. It can't be brought here if you want it to take off again. The seneschal leaned forward. Lord trader. I know, Lewis. If you won't bring me the ship, I'll just have to cramp you and take the ship for myself. How? You don't have any shuttles. Look, this is ridiculous. I'm trying to give you- Bring me the ship! Oh, by the god, Emperor. The rogue trader sighed, meeting Gorgax's gaze. His eyes were like steel. Well, Gorgax, Lewis, you were right. Given the circumstances, Clintus, that is a poor consolation. Indeed. My bad. The war boss huffed, sensing that the negotiations were over. Nuff. Gumpf. He took in a deep breath, letting it out in a mighty roar. Kill that! Freaker Deka didn't have time to finish his sentence. The rogue trader spun, plasma pistol in hand, the shot striking the war boss directly to the chest. Taking his cue, Gorgax bellowed and charged forward, cutting a path through the orcs with his hook and chopper. Laz rounds whipped through the air as the seneschal pitched in, the three making a hasty route towards the edge of the encampment. Despite the readiness of the orcs for combat, the rogue trader had managed to surprise them. That one! The rogue trader cried, pointing towards a blue painted truck on the edge of the scrum. He gutted a charging orc with his power sword, shooting another with a smoking plasma pistol. I'll drive! Not down, boss! It's soggin' blue! Maybe so, Gorgax, but there's room to reverse out! <laughs> oh, throne! I'm quite sure that was the war boss, Lord Trader! He's still alive! Course he is, you git! He's the war boss! He's dead hard! A problem for later, gentlemen! Get in! Now this is more like it! Gorgax nodded approvingly at the battle wagon. Its huge wheels were good and spiky, its chassis festooned with jagged scrap, and, most importantly, covered in liberal splashes of red paint. At the front of the vehicle, a monstrous spring-loaded hammer was winched in place, sparkling with inexplicable aluminum force. But that was not all. At the back of the wagon was a huge open space, capable of holding a scrum of at least 20 orcs. Built in the centre was a ramshackle tower for a swivelling zap gun, a team of grots waiting beside it and eyeing Gorgax nervously. The seneschal stared up at the vehicle. He shivered uncontrollably, his eyes glazed and unfocused. The boss had hopped him up on something to deal with the pain, and it appeared to be potent. He pointed at the side of the wagon. What are those? Gorgax followed his gaze. The git was referring to long stilts built along the wagon sides, each attached to a counterweighted pivot. The freebooter grinned. 
day is for getting the gates that are next year. Oh, that's odd. The Seneschal's voice was vacant. The rogue trader gently clapped the Seneschal on the back. Let's get you sat down, Lewis. I... I should like to man the cannon, Lord Trader. Oh? Yes, I... I like the cannon. Does it work, Gorgax? Gorgax rolled his eyes. It works! So don't be gumfing about how it don't! Lewis, I'm not sure you should be operating giant weaponry at this time. Ah, put a git on the zap, boss. Might make him useful for once. The rogue trader sighed. All right. He glanced around to the mob of orcs standing around them. What about them? Gorgak shrugged. Don't come with. Hmm. What a strange day this is turning out to be. I suppose I'll drive. Right you are, boss. I'll be in the back. Can you get Lewis up onto that tower? Yes, boss. Oi, you lot, get this gear on that tower now. Not quite what I meant, but well, never mind. The strange group made their way to the battle wagon, the rogue trader clambering into the driver's seat and revving the engine. Black belches of thick smoke guttered from the exhaust, the engines thundering so loudly that the entire vehicle shook and trembled. Orcs manned big shooters and strapped themselves onto the stilts, gaining enthusiasm by the second. Gorgax ripped off a boss pole from among the scrap and fashioned it into a crutch, limping his way along the bed as he yelled orders. Meanwhile, the Seneschal was up in the tower, his shaking hands clutched tight at the zap gun, surrounded by confused-looking grots. And then, they were off, speeding through the mountain pass, sides scraping along the cliffs. Gorgax winced as a stilt-mounted orc was grated along the rocks, losing his nose and then his face. His limp body continued to hang from the stilt, other orcs taking pot shots at the corpse for fun. The battle wagon picked up speed. There was no sign of pursuit behind them, the rock slide having effectively covered their tracks. The boys were getting restless. Gorgax hit a few of them on the head to keep them in line, but in truth, he was feeling a bit disappointed as well. Then they turned the corner. The hundred wheels of the war boss Freaker Deeker had been waiting for them. The full might of the clan in all its mad glory, rollers, Wheels, tracks, rockets, big shooters, cannon, and lots and lots of orcs. The rogue trader brought their own wagon to a stop. Gorgak sighed happily. They went around then. Good. Was wondering where they were. One of the orcs by Gorgak stepped forward, braver than the rest. Ah, uh, boss, I think we're done for. Time to do a runner. Gorgak smacked him on the head with his crutch. Shut it, stupid grot! Dozens of orc vehicles revved their engines, a rising cloud of exhaust smoke snatching at the sky. The bone breaker wagon of war boss Freaka Deeker edged forwards at the front. Even from here, Gorgax could see him, a black scorch mark in his mega armored chest. Gorgax thought the war boss looked a bit peeved. The rogue trader poked his head out of the window and looked back. Ah, uh, Gorgax, I don't suppose we have a plan. Go for the big one. To clarify, is that part of a strategy or just a reflection of your general oeuvre? Don't know what that means, boss. I'm asking if this is... Their conversation was cut short by the crackle of the zap gun, a building rumble of static exploding into a thunderbolt of pure energy. The Seneschal aimed it at Freaka Deeker's vehicle, hitting a cannon placement and blowing it to smithereens. The war boss's bone breaker wagon reeled as a set of ammunition stores detonated a shower of burning greenskin parts scattering to the floor. Lewis, what the hell was that? Um, wah! <laughs> He's gone green! The hundred wheels of Freaka Deeker began to advance, orcs hollering and whooping. At the front was Freaka Deeker's bonebreaker, rapidly picking up speed. The spiked roller on the front began to spin, each rotation shaking through the monstrous chassis. Right at him, Gorgax. You sure? Whoa. All right, then. The rogue trader slammed his foot on the accelerator, almost throwing Gorgax off his feet. The Seneschal fired again, seemingly at the sky, shooting lightning bolts into the heavens. A couple of orcs fired their sluggers in grudging approval. Give me that! Gorgax yelled, pointing to one of the pivot stilts. 
He nodded in approval as one of the bigger boys ripped it from the chassis, smacking three orcs from the wagon as the git spun the stilt and carried it over. Now, slam it into floor and help me up. Gorgax, this is starting to seem like a very bad idea. If we hit that vehicle head on, we're going to be splattered. Give me a sec, boss. We don't have many seconds left. The Seneschal righted the zap gun and scored a glancing blow off Freakadika's roller, burning off a couple of its spikes. The war boss roared, firing his shoulder-mounted rockets by way of reply. One corkscrewed wildly to the side, but the other struck the bed of the wagon, exploding some orcs and showering Gorgax in body parts. The freebooter laughed, using another orc's head as a step by which to clamber up the stilt pole. He looked out across the mountain pass. Freakadika was still in front, the other hundred wheels knew not to get involved in a personal scrap. Boss? Yes, Gorgax? When you get close, it to brakes real good. Why? Then get out the wagon and get running. Why, Gorgax? Because he thinks we is playing chicken, but we ain't. We're having a proper crumping instead. <laughs> um, all right. Lewis? Lewis, are you still with me? Lord Trader! Brace! We're about to break hard and then I need you out of the vehicle. Lord Trader! <laughs> Three! I feel a little woozy. Two! Brace! One! The rogue trader hit the brakes. The stilt snapped forwards. And Gorgax became a bird. Time seemed to slow. Gorgax flew through the air catapulted towards Freakadika. Rockets flew past his head, so close that he could feel his skin blister from the heat of their trails. The war boss opened his iron gob wide and roared, his bellow silent against the rushing air that whipped through Gorgax's ears. Gorgax yelled back anyway, bringing up his hook. The feathers in his snazzy hat were slicked back against the felt. Gorgax knew that the feathers would help him fly. He hit Freakadika square on, driving his hook through the plasma-damaged part of the warboss's mega armor. His hook went directly through the Freakadika's chest, and then the rest of his arm went directly through the Freakadika's chest, and then his shoulder went directly through the Freakadika's chest too. Simultaneously, his own hook and arm began to crumple, bones compacting in on each other as the entire limb was reduced to a fraction of its original length. Gorgax continued to fly through the vehicle, and the warboss started to fly with him. They smashed through the driver's seat, a cannonball driving its way throughout the entire wagon. They smashed through metal and hydraulics. They smashed through unfortunately placed greenskins. Jagged shards of scrap tore through the convenient shield of Freakadika's body. Gorgax could smell blood and burning metal and the burning metal stink of burning blood. And then the bone breaker wagon exploded. And for the second time that day, everything went black.